the merge was beneficial to both of them. Lisa Marie Presley was trying to push her musical career and Michael Jackson was trying to prove to the world that he liked bitches. And I mean, like I said before, if he gonna like any bitch, it's gonna be the king's door. <laughs> If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com for these mixed shades. I think we got one pair in red left and one pair in black left. Go on over there to Up Top Beauty and check it out. And if you are not already a part of this book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies. Yes, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets anyway, it. Anyway, y'all, let's get to this Michael Jackson book because we almost done. Did they make love? Lisa, say her friends, is a woman who enjoys physical intimacy and would not become involved in a relationship that was not sexual. Child, Lisa Marie say that that Michael Jackson can put it down. In truth, Lisa and Michael had an intense and active sex life, which came as a surprise to many people. Not really to me. On May 26, 1994, Michael and Lisa were finally married in the Dominican Republic after a brief and, according to her, uneventful courtship. Lisa's divorce from Danny Kiao had been finalized 20 days earlier. Damn! Lisa's mother... Priscilla had married the most famous singer of her time back in 1967. And now Lisa followed suit with a man who was arguably pop's biggest star. Though Michael and Lisa claimed to be crazy about one another, much of the public just thought they were crazy. I actually did fall in love with him, she told Newsweek in the spring of 2003, but I don't know what was on his menu. The close relationship they had forged during the time of the allegations was known only to those in Michael's and Lisa's inner circle. The two had managed to keep the fact that they even knew each other out of the press. Therefore, when they married, it was like a bolt from the blue. Lisa was in love with Michael. Did he feel the same about her? Always painfully conscious of the emptiness of his life, he said that he'd been missing out on too much and wanted to now jumpstart his career. What Michael and Lisa ended up with was a 15 minute ceremony in front of a judge at his home in La Vega, 85 miles east of Casa de Capo, a resort owned by fashion designer Oscar De La Renta, where Michael and Lisa had sequestered themselves in a $4,000 a night oceanfront villa. The ceremony was conducted in Spanish and translated to Michael and Lisa by one of the attorneys present. Instead of the tuxedo he had dreamed of wearing on his wedding day, Michael wore black pants and matching shirt with a cowboy belt, bolero, and black flamenco hat. Lisa also wore black. They exchanged heavy gold wedding bands. Michael later said he missed having Catherine present and to some extent even Joseph. It just didn't feel right, he said. I felt empty like everything else in my world. That night, Elizabeth was with friends at the Polo Lounge in the Beverly Hills Hotel. When a reporter asked her if she would confirm rumors of Michael's merge, she snapped at him. I am not in the business of clarifying rumors. Now be gone. Feeling strongly that Michael was exploiting her daughter, using her to rehabilitate his damaged image. Priscilla was not happy about the news. 
Can you see what he's up to? She asked her, according to what Lisa later recalled. It's so obvious. Lisa disagreed. She felt that Michael truly loved her. My God, use your instincts. She could not believe her daughter would marry, of all people on the planet, Michael Jackson. What does your gut tell you? It tells me that you should mind your own goddamn business, Lisa shot back. It's time for me to lead my own life and for you to stay out of it. Clearly, she and Priscilla had issues that predated her marriage to Michael. Also, her sexual chemistry with Michael was so intense. Lisa wasn't about to give it up. All I wanted at the time was to believe what he was telling me, and that was it. It was this whole psycho drama that was going on, and I really put my mother through it. She thought he was lying to me, using me. Lisa's ex-husband, Danny, still a trusted friend, was also unhappy about the union. Michael decided that he didn't want to announce the marriage. He said he wanted them to have their privacy. However, Lisa disagreed. The more we hide it, the more interest there will be in it, she argued. Shouldn't we just announce it so that the interest will die down? She didn't know Michael very well, did she? Of course, what he really wanted to do was to create a big worldwide controversy about his relationship with her. He just couldn't help himself. His strategy worked. For the next two months, the press ran with headlines speculating as to whether or not Michael and Lisa had been married. Meanwhile, the two took a duplex apartment suite in Trump Tower in New York, directly below Donald Trump. If Lisa thought she was famous before, she would discover an entirely new and unwelcome sort of celebrity as Michael's wife. As it turned out, even though Lisa was in love with Michael, she, not he, was the one with certain goals she hoped to achieve as a result of the marriage. Chief among them was the realization of her musical career. Michael told Lisa that he would attempt to get her a record deal at Sony says her friend, Monica Pastel. Yes, she loved him. She didn't marry him because of the offer to help her career, but it was on the table as something he was going to work on for her. The marriage was beneficial to both of them. Lisa Marie Presley was trying to push her musical career and Michael Jackson was trying to prove to the world that he liked bitches. Okay, and I mean, like I said before, if he gonna like any bitch, it's gonna be the king's, king's daughter. All right, I mean, you know, if you're gonna go at all, you better go hard. Plus, you know, Lisa Marie Presley act like that sex is, yeah. You know what they say about them skinny dudes? Once she started living with him in their residences, Lisa was even more amazed at the degree to which Michael was emotionally repressed. Determined the to fix him, she busily went about the work of peeling away layer after layer, as if he were an onion. However, it was difficult. The protective layers around him were thick and impenetrable. It had taken years for him to become who he was, and he wasn't going to easily change because he a Virgo. Them, them mother, them bad, I mean bad. Being in a relationship with a Virgo is tough. He didn't want to become more communicative as Lisa had insisted. He didn't want to become more extroverted either as she had suggested. Most maddening to Lisa, her new husband continually blamed other people for problems that were clearly of his own making. Lisa, a Scientologist, maintained that she was the architect of her own life and had no one to blame but herself for the aspects of it that had not worked out 
for her. Lisa felt Michael was too much into playing the victim. Their relationship became strained as she tried to prod him along, make him feel less sorry for himself, lift his spirits. She said he was like a young boy. That's right, Lulu. She said he was like a young boy, angry at the world. She had no patience at all with the lost childhood routine. Who hasn't had a miserable childhood, she would say. Show me someone who loved every single second of their childhood and I'll show you a person who had deluded himself into believing such a thing. Word, Lisa. You, you, there are traumatic events that will happen to you in your life that will manifest in your behavior as an adult that you will never get over, okay? But the fact of the matter is, just try. Seek help. Put forth the effort, if you can, because depression is real. Put forth the effort to try to live life happily and successfully. And if you got to go to your doctor and say, hey, look, doctor, I need to get me some of this Effexor or whatever it is that uh, you got to take in order to help yourself be a better person on this earth for the rest of your years, go for it. Because I'm not about to live the rest of my life miserable, okay? I'm 50. Two, Michael and Lisa certainly didn't make many television appearances, but the two that they did agree to do together are memorable. September, September 1994, they made their first television appearance as husband and wife on the MTV Awards in New York in front of 250 million television viewers. Child, this is so funny to me. I remember this. I was like, ooh, that kiss is so awkward. Ooh, it's awkward. But child, let me tell you the backstory about that awkward kiss. Backstage, according to Lisa, Michael announced to her, now check it out, girl. I would love that. I would love that. For somebody to be like, look here, girl. Oh, look here, woman. I would love that. Now, check it out, girl. I'm going to kiss you when you get out there. Oh, no, you're not, she smiled. Oh, yes, I am. He said, smiling, he thought they were bantering, but Lisa wasn't kidding. No, Michael, she said, that's bullshit. Absolutely not. I don't want to do that. Oh, sure you do, he remarked. It'll be great. I'm telling you, don't you effing do that, Michael, she warned him. I'm serious. About an hour later, they walked on to the stage to thunderous applause, holding hands. Lisa didn't know when the kiss was going to happen, she would recall, but she knew he was going to do it because by this time I realized that he does whatever he wants to do. She said that as they walked out from the wing, she was squeezing his hand so hard, I think I cut off the circulation. Just think, nobody thought this would last, Michael told the audience with a grin. He motioned to Lisa. Then he embarrassed her and kissed her fully on the lips. Now, I don't think that was embarrassing, you know, for your husband to kiss you on the lips. Okay, she just wasn't ready. It looked it awkward because I wanted out of my skin, Lisa said years later. I hated it. I felt used like a prop, she said. It was awful. It ain't awful when he put in that kiss square planted on that conkalika. Who knew when Michael Jackson put that kiss on her that he was putting it down. And she made it look all awkward. So it wasn't him that made it look awkward. It was Lisa Marie. But it was definitely awkward. It looked very awkward. I was like, damn, I don't even think they fuck. Oh, they was fucking according to Lisa Marie. They was doing the booty. Nine months later, in June 1995, Michael and Lisa were interviewed on the American television program, Dateline, by reporter Diane Sawyer. Them Diane Sawyer interviews be stressing people out, man. He explained why he decided to settle the Jordy Chandler case. I talked to my lawyers and I said, can you guarantee me that justice will prevail? Michael recalled. And they said, Michael, we cannot guarantee you what a judge or jury will do. With that, I was like catatonic. I was outraged, totally outraged. So oh, I said, I have got to do something to get out from under this nightmare. 
all these lies and all these people coming forward to get paid and these tabloid shows, just lies, lies, lies. So we got together and my advisors advised me it was hands down a unanimous decision to resolve the case. Throughout his explanation, Diane had continually attempted to interrupt him to ask how much money he had spent on the settlement. Finally, a protective Lisa abruptly cut her off and said, he's been barred to discuss it. Yeah, don't badger my husband, bitch. In October 1994, about six months after Michael and Lisa were married, the two of them and some friends were invited to dine with Elizabeth Taylor at her Bel Air home. 62-year-old Elizabeth took 26-year-old Lisa aside to offer some hints as to and how she might keep her husband happy. Pause, one of you in the comments, cause you know I don't always respond, okay? But I do read. And when one of y'all in the comments had said that Elizabeth Taylor was Michael Jackson's handler, I was like, damn, that makes sense. That is, that was his handler. Always look your best, she told Lisa. He's into glamor and you must be into it too. And if you don't like the jewelry he gives you, fake it, act like you do, and keep separate bedrooms to keep him guessing. Also, she said, find the right colors and wear the hell out of them. Later, when Elizabeth was out of earshot, Lisa asked Michael, what era is she living in? No wonder she's been divorced seven times. A major problem for them in their marriage was that Michael insisted that he still be free to go on a vacation with young male friends, even though he was now a married man. Lisa did not believe that her husband was a ediophile. She made that much clear. I wouldn't have let him near my kids if I ever thought that. She later said, never once did I see him do anything inappropriate ever. However, she was dismayed that he would still want to be seen in the company of youngsters, considering all that they had been through with the Jordy Chandler matter. She felt that any public display with youngsters and especially with boys would only serve to spark more rumor and innuendo about him and by extension of her. While many in her husband's world of wonder, as she called his insulated environment, put up with Michael's poor judgment, she wasn't going to be one of them because she's an Aquarian woman. She's a boss and she not here for Michael Jackson's bush. On one hand, I applaud her for wanting to step in and save Michael Jackson, but he's not strong enough to be with a Lisa Marie Presley. He can't handle it because you have those kind of people that will deal with a Michael Jackson personality and cower. Lisa Marie Presley ain't that person to cower. She going to dig in his ass. Now let's set way into this. This is another reason why I believe Michael Jackson is not a uh, ediophile. Not at all. What I believe is that he is delusional and crazy. He is still trying to prove to the world that it is okay for a grown man to have a relationship with a young boy and it not be actual. Okay? He is steadfast on proving to you niggas that your mind is dirty and that you need to go to the doctor and fix yourselves. Not him, it's you. Lisa didn't understand how Michael could disregard her feelings, said James Cruz, who knew her well at the time. It was embarrassing for her to constantly defend his actions, always explaining that he was not a edophile. He was misunderstood. He was a child at heart and blah, blah, blah. The same stuff you always hear about the guy. Why are you so selfish? Lisa Harlot at Michael one evening in front of the staff members at Neverland.
Oh, oh, oh.